All right, my inventor Jedis, it's time to take a break from working in Inventor and learn how to use dial calipers. Uh, in the last lesson, I showed you guys how to calculate mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation. And we did this using Excel. And some of you guys asked, well, why are we doing this? Well, the answer is we're going to do some quality control on our cubes. I'm going to have you guys measure each of the 27 cubes that make up your wooden puzzle, and we are going to do some calculations with them. So, first step, of course, there is to measure. So we're going to learn how to use dial calipers. These are very precision, uh, these are a precision measuring instrument um, that measure to the thousandth of an inch. They are also very expensive. So please do not play with them or try to use them as your lightsabers or, you know, duel the person next to you with them because I will have to take them away from you. So there are four different ways that you can measure with dial calipers. You can measure outside diameter or thickness, inside diameter or space, step and hole depth. So let me show you some illustrations of how this works. Outside measuring faces is the most common use for these things and it's how we're going to measure our blocks. There's a nice isometric view for you. Inside measuring faces, very useful for measuring diameters of holes, like so. Step measuring faces let you measure the distance between two steps or uh, two surfaces that are uh, separated from each other, just like that. And finally, hole depth, just like that. So how do you read these things? Well, first of all, there are two parts. The first part is to look at the blade, which is right here, and then look at the dial. Notice up here on the blade there are numbers. There's big numbers and there are little numbers. Big numbers are inches, little numbers are parts of inches. But one thing to remember is you never read the number unless the line behind it is fully visible. So in this example, I'm looking here and I see that I can see one. So it's one inch, point, and I come over here and I see four. So that's four tenths of an inch. And now I go to the dial. And it looks to me like the dial is sitting on 37. There's a closer view for you. So to read this, it would be 1.437 inches. How wide is the block? Let's do this one together. I see a big one, so it's going to be one inch, one point. Can I see the line behind the four? Just barely, so I'm going to read the four, 1.4, and then I go to the dial, zero, two. One point four zero two is how I would measure that. All right, folks, now we are going to uh, measure our cubes for real. So you should have gotten a worksheet from me that says measurement and statistics using math to find problems, a set of calipers, and 27 hardwood cubes. Each cube has two surfaces that are a little uh, fuzzy compared to the others. These are called the end grain and we are going to measure across the end grain. But in order to keep track of which cubes I've measured, I am going to number them in pencil. Don't use pen. So here's cube number one. And by the way, if you'd rather just read this, I have wrote it all out for you too. Okay. So I'm going to measure wooden cube number one. One thing to, to remember guys, when you have a dial caliper, if it does not sit on zero when closed, please bring it to me and I'll help you fix that. We're going to slide the cube in like that and we're going to measure. So hopefully you guys can see this on the document camera, but I see 
0.7. I can't read 8 because I only see the line behind 7. So 0 0.7, 4, 8. So I'm going to write that here on the paper. And then continuing, continue to measure all of my cubes. Folks, if when you measure these cubes you get one that's bigger than 0.8, you need to bring it to me because they should all be in the 0 0.75, 0 0.76, 0 0.77 maybe size. I mean, if you're and if you're getting anything over an inch, you're doing it completely wrong. So once I have my 27 uh, cubes, I'm going to find measured. I'm going to find the mean, the median, the mode, the range, and you can do this in Excel, just like I showed you. And then you're going to do a histogram. And the way you do the histogram is you take each number here, 0.748, and you find 0.748, and you color in that block. And it, once you color in all 27 blocks, it's going to give you a histogram to work with. Then you're going to calculate the percentage of your blocks that fall between these two red lines. And finally, there are some questions here for you to answer, including finding the population standard deviation of your data set. And once again, you can use Excel. There's a separate video that shows you how to do this in Excel. So good luck and have fun measuring cubes.